You are listening to You and the Truth, where we will give you the truth face to face. Now what you do with it is up to you. Except for God, everything has a beginning and an end. It's a universal law of nature. By the same token, some people aren't meant to be together and some unions just aren't meant to be. Now, regardless of how well a relationship begins or the intentions of those involved, if the values, the ethics, the likes and dislikes are vastly different, if mutual respect no longer exists and the bickering, the arguing, the name calling, finger pointing and blame are constantly present to the point of violence, then for the good of everyone involved, it's probably best to part ways. A difficult decision for sure, but one that must be made in the interest of everyone involved. This, folks, is where we are as a nation. The writing is on the wall. Hi everyone, I'm Ralph, and welcome to You and the Truth, and today's episode, The Big Two, A National Divorce. What began as a unit of separate states with the goal of one greater good has now reached the point where divorce is more than a viable option. It seems to be the only option or risk losing it all. Although the reasoning used by our founding fathers seems sound and logical when creating these United States, the one variable they could not, and did not factor into the equation was human nature. And now human nature has reared its ugly head. It's out of control. And like a wild rabbit once caged animal that's now free to roam about, there seems to be little hope of putting it back in its cage. Those that have allowed their human nature to take over smell the blood and are hungry beyond anything any animal, wild or domesticated, can imagine. Nothing short of devouring its prey is acceptable and anything and anyone who gets in their way is fair game. This is war. Take no prisoners, spare no lives. This is the radical left, the extremists. The only thing that separates them from global terrorists are the very same rights and freedoms they're hell-bent on destroying. They prey on those who suppress their animalistic human nature for fear of someday having to answer to a higher power. You see, the radical left has no higher power. They are their own gods. This difference in gods is one that cannot be negotiated. United States was built on God, and either you believe in Him or you don't. There's no middle of the road, there's no negotiating. And so it's time to part ways. It's either that or all out war, and war for God fearing people is the last option, one that we wish to avoid at any cost. Which, by the way, is a view very rarely shared by many of our elected officials who condone and promote violence domestically and don't mind sending our children to foreign countries to die for money and power, all under the guise of democracy. <clears throat> now, there has been talk in previous years of states wishing to secede from the Union, a subject which has been debated but always dismissed. Well, we here at You and the Truth believe that it's, it's not only time to revisit that subject, but to act on it. It would be complicated and messy, but like spouses who cannot and are not willing to reconcile, it would probably be best for all involved. <clears throat> As you know, life is a series of decisions, and all decisions have consequences, some short-term and some long-term, but consequences nonetheless. In 1860, when President Lincoln decided to oppose slavery, seven Southern states opposed him and decided to secede from the Union. The Northern states' opposition to secession led to the Civil War of 1861, which led to the formation of these United States. The states came together. They married, so to speak. But now, they've grown apart. Now, I love analogies, so I'm going to use one here just to bring it down to a level that we can all wrap our heads around. Even me. Imagine a couple who marry and begin adopting children. Years pass and now they find themselves with many of their adult children living with them. Not an exaggerated example in today's world. Most of the children respect the rules of the house. However, a few of them whose constant disobedience, defiance and refusal to follow the house rules causes tension between the parents to the point where they argue 
with instances leading to near violence. The children and the parents have stopped conversing, exchanging ideas, and all they do is clash and have disdain and dislike for each other. This is all taken on of life of its own. They've drifted apart to such an extent that there seems to be no compromise on any issue, no matter how small. The tension has affected the parents so deeply that taboo when their union began, divorce, is now seriously considered. Now in cases such as this, although the options are many, the one option that must be considered is for the troublesome children to move out. They would then be on their own to live their lives as they wish, with no interference from their parents, but no access to any parental benefits. There'll be no running back home or calling their parents to bail them out when they get in trouble or overextend themselves financially. Now this being the case, perhaps most of the conflicts at home would subside or be eliminated altogether, and the marriage for the good of the other children can be saved. Now let's apply this analogy to the United States. This family called America has 50 children, with a few of them out of control. And although it would seem at first blush that they were all adults, on further inspection, that may not be the case at all, at least from a mental aspect. Like the family scenario previously mentioned, the conflicts in America have gotten to the point where it's time to talk national divorce. And like any divorce, there are many options available. However, we here at You and the Truth feel that the most viable option is for the rebellious adult children to move out. Now with that said, let's discuss a couple of these out of control children. There are more, but to keep this as short as possible, we'll discuss the two most troublesome and we'll call them the big two. First, California. For the benefit of those who are not aware of the history behind California, Mexico seceded, or excuse me, ceded California to the United States in 1848. California later petitioned to join the United States family and they did so in 1850, becoming the 31st state of the union. They moved into our home and became part of the United States family voluntarily. But as stated earlier, everything has a beginning and an end, and some unions just aren't meant to be. Now with that said, you and the truth believes it's time for California to move out. You know, become independent and do their own liberal, loony-inspired thing. However, to be just and fair, there may be another option, and although it would seem to be a long shot, one worth attempting at least for the parents the United States, to be able to say they gave it the old college try, as we like to say. We propose that the United States return California to Mexico. A gift, so to speak. You know, no cost, no charge, no strings attached. Of course, we don't think Mexico's leaders would accept unless they've gone completely out of their minds or have inhaled a large quantity of those drugs they allow to enter into our country. I can just hear Mexico's president saying, I appreciate it, United States, but no thank you. We have enough problems as it is. Well, it was worth trying. Now, short of that, it's time to tell California to pack its bags. It's forced emancipation time, Cal. A fancy way of saying, you're evicted. You're out of here. And I can just hear the screaming, the bitching, and the moaning all the way down to South Florida. But hey, come on, Cal, it's obvious. Look, this is beyond repair. You know, we don't get along. We don't agree on anything. All we do is argue and fight. So I think it's, it's the best if we just part ways. You know, I'll take the high road, you take the low and all that sentimental garbage. Besides, you can afford it, California. I mean, aren't you the world's fifth largest economy in front of India and just behind Germany? Isn't that enough to satisfy your bottomless ego? but I do have to get this off my chest before you leave. You, California, are one huge and royal pain in the ass. That felt good. Let's move on to the second of the big two, another rebellious and out of control child, New York, the 11th state of the union. The Big Apple, rotten to its core, worms coming out of every crook and cranny, 
Now this is the apple the witch should have fed Snow White. She would have never recovered kiss or no kiss. New York is California's eastern twin. Never have two entities been so far apart geographically, yet so similar in mental ineptness. Out of control and sinking fast, New York has officially fallen out of grace. And like California, its ego, its arrogance and pride are out of control, folks. What was once considered the gateway to the world is now a black hole leading nowhere. Like rats scampering from a burning building, sane people are leaving in droves. Now, here's where it gets dicey. Although the ideal situation is for the big two to join forces and become their own nation, the fact that they're basically radical bookends with the rest of the country in the middle creates a quandary. As such, perhaps it would be ideal to bring some of the other rebellious children into the fold. You know, states that due to their consistent election of liberal officials, the passing of radical legislation, the condoning of violent protests and riots, the legalization of drugs, the emancipation of convicted criminals, and the encouragement for the homeless to set up shop where they wish, just to name a few of their accomplishments, leave no doubt as to who they are. The question remaining is, which of the big two should they join? Well, let's go over it. Short of forming their own country, it would seem logical that states such as Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, let's see, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and the District of Columbia. I don't think I missed anybody. It would seem logical they should join New York's cuckoo's nest, since they're not only neighbors, but deserve each other. Now, on the West Coast, seen as to how they're right next to each other and view life through the same hallucinatory kaleidoscope composed of tinted and colored glass, Oregon and Washington should unite with California and form their own communist clan. The rest of the rebellious children like Minnesota, Illinois, and Michigan should, because of their geographical proximity, either petition to join New York's cuckoo's nest or form their own loony nation. Of course, every child has the option of remaining as part of these United States, with the caveat that they must agree to abide by the house rules, which up to now have served us pretty well, at least better than any other country on earth, albeit with some defects, being that no one and nothing is perfect, except for God. Now, before going any further, I'm compelled to issue the following warning to those other rebellious states. Here we go. Should you decide to join California's commie clan or New York's cuckoo's nest, you should know that you'll have no say as to how you're governed since neither California nor New York have any notion that the word compromise exists, much less what it means. It's either their way or they'll burn your homes and businesses to the ground or better yet, They'll confiscate them and either turn them into government offices or let some spaced out junkies run them. But I repeat myself. Now we know that this proposal is raw and can be tweaked a bit. But when the smoke clears, North America would be composed of three or four separate nations, each with their own constitution, their own laws and judicial systems. The last of which would be simple for these rebellious children since they don't believe in police in jails or in the punishment of criminals. They would all be free and sovereign. They would carry out their own economic weight and conduct business with whom they wish. Now, of course, in the scenario just mentioned, the Capitol building, the White House, and all government buildings and offices of the remaining United States of America would move to another state. Texas come into mind. Hell knows they have enough room. Every new nation would decide where to house their capital and government buildings, etc. All that stuff. That is, until they're burned to the ground or taken over by junkies and drug dealers. Radical solution? Yeah. But these are radical times, folks. Now, as mentioned before, we realize that the scenario we just mentioned would be messy and complicated. But if the states could be united, they too can be separated. Because everything has a beginning and an end. It's either that or reach the boiling point. A point which, like an image in the side view mirror, is closer 
than it seems. The right doesn't like the left, liberals don't like conservatives, and vice versa. And this will not change because of a kumbaya moment, folks. If the attacks of 9-11 did not bring this country together, nothing will. That was our test. And we failed miserably. This is not going to change, folks. We're past reconciliation. We're beyond making up. The hate, the vitriol, and the violence are too out of control. Human nature has reared its ugly head. It's out of the bottle, and there's no way to put it back in. Let's get this done and minimize the damage or risk losing our country altogether. Now, we know this proposal or anything similar will never happen, but we can dream. We can dream of returning some semblance of sanity to this, the greatest country in the world, and the envy of every nation, at least until Biden, Biden and Hyena Harris took over. And it will never happen because we continue to make the same mistake year after year, decade after decade, allowing the same money and power hungry morons to run it. The saddest part of all folks is that we have no one to blame but ourselves. And that is the truth. What you do with it, well, is up to you. You have just come face to face with the truth. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and hit that bell so you will be notified when we drop new episodes.